All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, I need... Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the... car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me! The car! The car! If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this! Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Doc. You disintegrated Einstein. Come down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! Uh, that's not how it happened. Uh, Doc? Oh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. What's in the box? Don't touch that! It's plutonium! P uh, plutonium? How do you think I generated 1.21 gigawatts of power? Notebook, notebook. Got it! Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention! The thing that makes time travel possible! In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's mass equals I times Z. Doc, uh, something's way off here. Phew! 
Ooh, it was just a dream. Marty, is everything okay? Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. 1986? But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late. Are we too late to stop the... sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. At least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty! Hi, Biff. They're worse. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... ...remembering. Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Back to the Future, the game. I've been really excited to do this Let's Play for quite some time, and I hope you are interested in seeing it, because Back to the Future is one of my favorite movie trilogies. It was certainly a big part of my childhood. A few years ago, Telltale Games, who is probably most well known for the Walking Dead game, uh, made this game a little bit before that one. And I didn't exactly hear about it at the time, but I did check it out after the fact. How does it stack up to the Back to the Future film trilogy? Well, you're just going to wait and see to find out. A few things before we start. First of all, I'm going to be playing this game under the assumption that you, as the viewers, have seen the movies. If you have not watched the movies, and I highly recommend that you do so before watch, or watching this Let's Play, Back to the Future is a fairly self-referential uh, film trilogy, and the game certainly carries on that spirit. So I'm not going to be referencing the backstory in the movies uh, from the standpoint of trying to tell you guys what happened. I'm going to be referencing it assuming that you guys know what happened. Uh, the second thing is, is that uh, uh, this game is episodic and divided up into five episodes. Uh, we saw that the first episode, which is this one, is called It's About Time. And uh, some Let's Players who have gone through this game have divided the Let's Play into five parts as well, but I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be treating this game as one cohesive game, because it actually is. And that's kind of the way I bought it, too. I will, however, be titling the first video for each episode by the episode title, so this video is called It's About Time. Uh, I hope that's no trouble for everybody. It's just a little bit less space taken up in the title box for each video. Um, and it allows you guys to see the title of each episode a little more as well. Or the title of each part of each episode, shall I say. Uh, this game is basically a point-and-click adventure game. Um, it's not um, a third, a first-person adventure game like the Nancy Drew games are. Instead, you can walk around here in the third person, and you can click on various items. And it's not unlike the... Uh, 
adventure games by Sierra, like uh, King's Quest or Space Quest, except unlike those games, there's not so many cheap deaths. In fact, there's no way to die in this game. It's just uh, puzzle solving and conversations, which I really like a lot. So let's take a look at uh, Doc's house here. Looks like there's an estate sale going on in his absence. Um, Doc has apparently been gone with Clara and his kids for quite some time, and it looks like the city of Hill Valley has decided to use uh, this space for a parking garage. Let's see what Doc left behind. I miss Einstein. I do too. I wonder why Doc didn't take any of these with him. That's a good question. Let's see. More clocks. Jennifer'd like that. She's into old stuff. Jennifer, of course, is Marty's girlfriend. A fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's it... fish had weird taste and decor. I kind of like Doc. Yeah, I was wondering why there's a kettle in there. Maybe he's just using the tank for storage now. Dog feeder. We saw this in the opening sequence of the first movie. Hey, let me... Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. Sorry, Marty. Looks like things haven't changed between uh, Biff and our dad since the end of the, the film trilogy. And it looks like the dog feeder doesn't actually have any food to dispense into the bowl, so the bowl isn't overflowing like the opening sequence of the first movie either. Let's see what's on TV. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. This looks familiar. This was the amplifier in, in the first movie. Looks like it's looks like it's back in one piece, though. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Let's make some noise. Good idea, but we need something with which to make the noise, though. Well, we'll come back to that in a bit, but for now let's talk to our dad, George. Hey, Dad. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly. I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know- Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son, but the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. What's Biff doing here? He wasn't a friend of Doc's. It's a public sale, Marty. Everyone's allowed. <laughs> Even Biff. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff, but I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. What did you dream? Oh, just... <laughs> weird... stuff... Yeah, about Doc. Well, that's understandable, don't you think? I guess, but... I feel like it was telling me something. We'll go for this option here, here in a minute, but for now I'm just going to look around a little bit more. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. So that's our first conversation in this game. We're going to have quite a few conversations with other characters. And one of the rather annoying things about conversations in this game is that you can't really tell whether the conversation option you're looking at is uh, 
leading further into the conversation or is just part of a tree of options in which you can select multiple options after you're done talking about one of them and go back to the other ones. So I'm going to try um, to select, whenever I'm faced with a choice from which there is no return, I'm going to try to select options I feel like Marty would say. Uh, and I'm going to try to roleplay as him, basically. And for the options that you can select any option, you can come back to all of them, I'll try to go through all of them. I know that there are certain conversations that happen uh, before you do certain things, and you can basically try to trigger those things earlier on uh, before you do the thing that erases that possibility, but I'm not going to be trying to slow the game down just to show you guys everything. I'm going to try to go through this game at a fairly reasonable pace, and yes, I know I'm talking quite a bit in this part, but this is a very cinematic game, and I'm not going to be ta talking quite as much. Maybe not quite as little as the opening cinematic, but I'm going to try to keep this, this running uh, without too many delays. One of the rather annoying things about the navigation is that the camera angles change from uh, area to area, and so you have to kind of adjust where you're walking to uh, match that. Let's take a look at this model of Hill Valley since the game has been telling us to do that. Doc built this model of downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, hmm. that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. That must be a pretty big fish tank. You know, you and my folks go way back. Yeah, so? So how about letting me have that model courthouse uh, for old time's sake? No, I think I'll keep it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Oh, no. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? <laughs> it's none of your business. Doc asked me Brown's to... Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Ha! That's not good. We need to get that notebook back from Doc, or from Biff, before he uh, runs off with the plans to the DeLorean. Of course, we know what happened the last time he got his hands on the DeLorean. We don't want that to happen again. So, in the meantime, we will stop the video here, and we will continue in the next part. So, see you then.